हेलो एवरीवन एंड वेलकम बैक टू माय प्लेलिस्ट ऑफ पैथोलॉजी व्हिच वी आर डूइंग फ्रॉम मीडियम रॉबिन्स और हार्ट की पैथोलॉजी हम डिस्कस कर रहे हैं टुडे आवर टॉपिक इज गोइंग टू बी इंट्रोडक्शन टू कॉन्जेनिटल हार्ट डिजीजेस नाउ देयर आर मेनी कॉन्जेनिटल हार्ट डिजीजेस बट आई थिंक 10 और 12 आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर यू टू रिमेंबर एंड अंडरस्टैंड फॉर योर एग्जामिनेशन पर्पसेस एंड दे आर ऑल लिस्टेड हियर एज यू कैन सी द कॉमन वंस आर द सेप्टल डिफेक्ट्स यू नो इन योर हार्ट देयर आर वेरियस सेप्टा सो बिटवीन द टू एट्रिया देयर इज एन एट्रियल सेप्टम एंड देन बिटवीन द टू वेंट्रिकल देयर इज अ वेंट्रिकुलर सेप्टम सो इफ देयर आर डिफेक्ट इन द वेंट्रिकुलर सेप्टम दैट्स व्हाट वी कॉल द वीएसडी वेंट्रिकुलर सेप्टल डिफेक्ट if there is a defect in the atrial septum that's what is what we know we call uh, or label as atrial septal defect so they too account for more than 50% of all the congenital anomalies and if you combine all these uh, 10 12 together they cause more than 90% of all the cardiac congenital anomalies so we need to focus on all of them but today's video is going to be the introductory video like i introduce uh you know the topic to you that what are the basic uh, concepts you need to understand about the congenital uh, cardiac malformations okay now congenital heart diseases are abnormalities of the heart of uh, or of the great vessels so they not only include the abnormalities of the heart but also the associated great vessels so for example the ascending aorta or also the incoming uh, big veins okay so they are all collectively known as congenital heart diseases because uh, it goes back to the development aapko agar cardiac embryology yaad hai us pe ek long video maine dali hui embryology ke section mein then you would know ki uh, the blood vessels also develop kind of along with the development of the heart so since this is all very much closely associated therefore uh, inki congenital anomalies uh, kafi interlink bhi hoti hain aur ek sath padhi bhi jati hain now these disorders uh, congenital heart diseases they account for 20 to 30% of all the birth defects now this is a big percentage so if you have all the birth defect listed together of all the birth defects about 20 to 30% is actually because of congenital heart diseases that's a big number and they span a spectrum of different malformations ranging from severe anomalies incompatible with intrauterine or perinatal life so these kids either die in utero or they die immediately after birth if they have these severe form of cardiac anomalies but they can be uh, very mild anomalies which usually have no or very few symptoms and they are completely unrecognized during life and you kind of live your life with them so they are either incidentally identified or you just don't identify them for the rest of your life so baat tani ki ye hai ki iska spectrum do extremes pe ho sakta hai these anomalies can be so severe that you can actually die in utero or they can be so subtle that you can live with them forever okay congenital heart diseases affect nearly 1% of the newborns um uh, again this is a big number because if you consider the number of births per year then this 1% is going to be a bit big number if there are 40000 infants per year so big number but that's alone in us the uh, worldwide it will obviously be more the incidence is higher in premature infants who are born earlier than their expected deliveries and those who are still born approximately 1/4 of which have significant cardiac malformations so these are the two categories okay premature and still borns defects that permit live birth usually involve only single chamber and or region of the heart so ye jo bachche ya to unki in utero death ho jayegi uh, they will either be still born ya phir agar wo paida ho rahe hain cardiac defects ke sath so probably unka koi ek a chamber effect hua hai aur wo subtle anomaly hai which can be repaired okay 12 entities yani 12 types of um, congenital heart diseases account for about 85% of all the car- congenital heart diseases so all these you know and we will talk about uh, almost all of them in separate videos okay right so thanks to the surgical advances the number of patients surviving with congenital heart disease has increased in the previous past so that's a good thing so for example if somebody has atrial septal defect can be repaired ventricular septal defect can be repaired actually many of them can be repaired surgically after birth so uh, the advances in surgery have actually uh, increased the number of survivors with congenital heart diseases okay 
but uh, obviously since there are problems since birth these uh, persons you know who have had surgeries they have uh, remodeled the structures and therefore later in life they are more prone to certain scenarios uh, such as uh, myocardial infarction arrhythmias such things okay so you always have to keep this in mind that while medical and surgical intervention improves life there can be associated risks okay right now uh, pathogenesis congenital heart disease most commonly arise from faulty embryogenesis ab baat ye hai ki cardiac embryogenesis is uh, a very cumbersome process i mean we have discussed this aap dekhe meri embryology ke section mein ek long video padi hai about the embryology and development of heart and blood vessels so there are so many steps involved and when there are so many steps involved in any embryogenesis procedure there are chances that any of this step can go wrong and as a result of this there will be congenital anomaly this is actually what happens here cardiac uh, embryogenesis is very detailed and cumbersome process so any step going wrong can lead to any problem okay so the congenital heart disease most commonly arise from faulty embryogenesis during the gestational period 3 to 8 when major cardiovascular structures are developing so this is the time period week number 3 to 8 most of the organs are uh, picking up pace in this period the cause is unknown in almost 90% of the cases ke kyun in mein cardiac abnormalities hain but kuch genes kuch infection link hue hain um of the accepted etiologic factors environmental exposures including uh, genital rubella infection teratogens maternal diabetes some genetic factors they have been linked to development of congenital heart diseases and some of the chromosomal abnormalities such as trisomies including 21 which is down syndrome also 18 15 13 and turner syndrome so some risk factors have been identified okay cardiac morphogenesis involve that is during the embryo life it involves multiple genes that work together to choreograph a complex series of tightly regulated events so i told you development of heart is a very very complex procedure key steps include commitment of progenitor cells to the myocardial lineage and this is how the whole embryo embryogenesis works so there are cells group of cells which are committed to a particular organ formation and from there they start forming a particular organ formation and looping of the heart tube segmentation and so all this uh, is the embryology patch okay proper orchestration of these remarkable transformations depend on network of transcription factors with uh, several signaling pathways in place including the wnt pathway the bmp pathway the tgf beta um, and notch pathways all genes have to be expressed at the right time and they have to be silenced at the right time if any problem goes in so ye sara jo orchestra hai it disturb hoga aur music acha nahi bajega which means that they can be cardiac abnormal and this is true for any embryo uh, embryological development also essential for cardiac morphogenesis is the mechanical force impaired by following pulsatile blood which is sensed by the cells of the developing heart and vessel so this is um i mean when the embryo is developing there are multiple stimuli for proper development there are genetic expression there are pressure stimuli all these things combined together make the appropriate development of an organ and if anything goes wrong i mean sometimes i believe that um just imagine aapka jo pura body banta hai pure organs bante hain how beautiful the process is this you know kitna almost error free hai yaar ye jo congenital anomalies hum padhte hain this is like in millions mein hai kitni births ho rahi hai zara dekhein kitne logon ko congenital anomalies hain bahut hi kam so actually error bahut kam hai in the formation of humans so it's a beautiful beautiful system but anyways things go wrong and when things go wrong then anomalies happen so since crafting of a normal um, heart in involves many steps even subtle perturbations can adversely influence uh, the outcome so yahan pe wohi baat ho rahi hai ki itna complicated procedure hai ki thodi si chhed chhad aur gadbad ho sakti hai most of the known genetic defects are autosomal dominant mutations causing loss or um, gain of uh, functions of a particular gene several mutations involve transcription factors so for example asds yani atrial septal defects and vsds and or conduction defects may be caused by transfer transcription factor mutations such as tbx5 key mutation has been linked to asd and vsd right but we exactly don't know how this causes asd and vsd um these are like genome wide association studies jahan mutations dekhi aur usko associate kiya ke kin jin logon mein mutations aayi hain unme se kitne logon ko asd vsd type ki cheeze thi right 
Okay, and then there are some syndromes such as uh, Noonan syndrome. They are associated with mutation in intracellular signaling pathway or appropriate functioning of microRNAs or epigenetic changes. So the paragraph actually tells you that obviously there are genetic factors underlying every congenital anomaly. Although we don't know the genetic factors in detail. So if you ask me what exactly is involved in the development of heart, we know a few genes, but the complete genetic profile which is involved in the beautiful development of heart is actually not known. If you listen to my embryology lectures, you will come to know that uh, after every few minutes I'm saying that wow this is a beautiful system but we don't know the details about it and that's how it is we don't know the exact genetic control mechanisms available to do the embryogenesis and that's the truth okay now clinically if you talk about videos different congenital anomalies usually in co broadly teen categories may divide so there are malformations which are causing left to right shunt. Iska matlab ye hua. So, so for example, if uh, this is your heart and I say that this is the right side, for example, and this is the left side and the heart portions are separated. But now suppose there are any issues, any problems, just ki wajah se, say for example, there is a defect here and now the left sided blood, which should not actually go like this to the right side, it should go to the left ventricle and then to the aorta systemic circulation. But if the left side of the heart is pumping blood to the right side of the heart like this because of a defect this is called left to right shunt similarly if there is a problem and there is a right to left transfer of blood this is called right to left shunt so these two are the very important common types of shunt and then there are some anomalies which cause obstruction so there are three categories uh, which are basically um, the major classification for the cardiac congenital anomaly. So left to right shunt, right to left shunt, uh, shunt and then obstruction. So if for example, aorta is arising from here, so obstruction at this level or from the pulmonary vessels, okay? Shunt basically is defined as an abnormal communication between chambers. So if there is a uh, opening here, that's a shunt okay if there is a right to left shunt that obviously will cause problem and cyanosis because in the right side of the heart what do you have in the right side of the heart you have impure deoxygenated blood so that's what you have here if it goes to the left side what do you have in the left side in the left side you have the oxygenated blood because this is all is coming from the lungs so now the deoxygenated blood will mix with the oxygenated blood and it can lead to cyanosis therefore these shunts are also known as uh, cyanotic shunts okay because now the venous blood the deoxygenated blood is entering into the systemic circulation because from the left side of the heart it goes to the systemic circulation so if there is any contamination of deoxygenated blood uh, then this deoxygenated blood is going to reduce the oxygen saturation here right now, the left to right shunts increase the blood flow in the pulmonary circulation and that should make sense to you because uh, uh, see what's happening that if there is a left to right shunt, so what will primarily happen is the fact that left side se blood kaha jayega right side mein. I said right side se blood kaha jata hai? Right side se blood jata hai in the pulmonary artery and to the lungs. So any shunt which is pushing blood from left to right will obviously increase the pulmonary blood flow. So pulmonary circulation will be heavily flooded. And it is not associated with cyanosis because now the impure blood is not going to the left side, but uh, the pure blood is actually coming to the right side. Okay. However, they expose the low pressure, low resistant pulmonary circulation to very high pressure and increased volumes because now the lungs, oh my God, what's happening? I'm lung and I'm getting a lot of liquid. Why? Because there is a shunt and the left side of the blood is coming to me via the right side. And this then leads to issues in the pulmonary vasculature. Okay. So these alterations lead to adaptive changes in the lung vascular resistance to protect the pulmonary bed. And this uh, leads to right ventricular hypertrophy and eventually the right sided heart failure. With time, increased pulmonary resistance can cause shunt reversal. So itna zyada aage lungs mein resistance develop ho gai ki ab ye shunt reverse ho gaya. So uh, this is not uncommon for you to read that left to right sided shunts after some time become right to left sided shunt because reverse phenomena okay and then there is an obstructive pathology so major blood vessels or valves they can be uh, obstructed chambers can be smaller in size uh, atritic we'll talk about them in great detail when we are discussing relevant disorders such as tetralogy of fallot and pulmonary stenosis so we'll talk about them the altered hemodynamics of congenital heart disease usually lead to chamber dilation obviously if you think um, agar 
लेफ्ट साइड से राइट साइड में आ जाता है सारा प्लाट लेफ्ट टू राइट श्रांड नाउ द राइट वेंट्रिकल इज गेटिंग मोर वॉल्यूम सो दे फॉर एंड इट इज प्रेसिंग द ब्लड अगेंस्ट पलमोनरी रेजिस्टेंस सो दिस हैज द टेंडेंसी नाउ टू डायलेट बिकॉज इट इज वर्किंग मोर सो एनी फ्लूड डायनेमिक चेंजेस लीड्स टू डायलिटेशन ऑफ दैट पर्टिकुलर चैम्बर or hypertrophy however some defects result in reduced muscle mass or chamber size such as uh, a condition called hyperplasia um, and uh, if it occurs before birth and atrophy develop we will talk about them when the specific disorders are being discussed okay so for now i would like you to uh, focus on the general mechanisms uh, all those that i discussed with you particularly the classification of uh, congenital heart diseases they can be number 1 Uh, right to left shunts number 2 uh, left to right shunts and number 3 obstructive problems okay so that's all for today and then we will talk about specific disorders so the next video for example will be left to right shunts take care of yourself